So we've been looking at the Sermon on the Mount, uh, which is Jesus' longest sermon recorded in chapters 5, 6, and 7. And today we finish the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is teaching his disciples about the kingdom of heaven and how to live as a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. In verses 7 to 11, Jesus describes the prayer life of the citizen of the kingdom of heaven. Again, look at verse 7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things, you should underline that, good things, to those who ask Him. So Jesus here is is talking about prayer and and the prayer life of the citizen of the kingdom of heaven. And in the Greek now, in the Greek, these verses are in what is called the present imperative. The present imperative. Imperative means it's a command. And the present tense means it should be something we do continually. So Jesus commands us to pray continually or persevere in prayer. Uh, You could read this verse, keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. The citizen of the kingdom of heaven should be continually praying to the Lord or or have a lifestyle of constant prayer. Just as the, the Apostle Paul said, pray without ceasing. That's the idea. And the reason we should pray continually is because of the character of God. The character of God. We should pray because of the way God responds to our prayers. Look at verse 9 again. What man is there among you who is, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who who ask Him? Now, I want you to note here in verse 11 that Jesus says, you being evil. Now, the world says that man by nature is good. But Jesus says man is evil. And man is by nature sinful. And and yet, a, a father, even though he is inherently evil, will provide for his children's needs. A faithful father will not deceive his children or intentionally uh, do something to harm his children. Uh, when, when the child asks for bread, he's not going to give him stone, a stone. Say, so, you know, here, kid, chew on this. Ha, ha, ha. You know, he, he's not like that, right? Or, or if he asks for a fish, he's not going to give him a snake. Our Father in heaven, it says, will give good things to those who ask him. And that's why we should pray constantly, because our heavenly father likes to give good things to his children as an expression of his love, as an expression of his generosity. God will not deceive us. God will not trick us. And give us something harmful when we ask for something helpful. He's not going to give you a stone when you ask for bread or a serpent when you ask for fish. God is good and he gives good things. Psalm 84 verse 11 says, listen, no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. No good thing will he withhold. Psalm 34 verse 10 says, those who seek the Lord shall lack shall not lack any good thing. What a wonderful promise. We will not lack any good thing. Now, it's important for us to consider all that the Bible says about prayer, because if you take a single verse like this out of context, uh, well, then we can make God just a vending machine, right? Anything we ask, he'll give us. Well, what what else does the Bible say? Uh, First John chapter five, verse 14 says, if we ask according to God's will, that's important. We ask according to God's will, he hears us. So when we ask, we must be asking according to his will. Uh, Jesus said, if you if you ask anything in my name. 
or in accordance with his his character. So it, it could be what we're asking for is not really according to God's will or it's not within the character uh, of Jesus. But if we ask for a good thing. He'll give it to us. Now, we, we may ask for something that is not a good thing for us. We may think it's a good thing. But, but God may not think it's a good thing. Or, or maybe it's not the right time for us to have that good thing. And so God says, you know what? That just wouldn't be a good thing for you. I know you better than you know you. And I can tell you that just won't be a good thing for you if I give that to you. You know, James chapter four, verse three, it says, you ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasure. So our, our motives in prayer can be wrong. But, but here, Jesus says, if, if it's a good thing, we can be confident God will give it to us. And so therefore, we should be constant in prayer. Now, verse 12 says, therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Now, verse 12 is, has become known to us as the golden rule. Uh, and this is probably the most famous thing Jesus ever said. Now, previous to Jesus, uh, Jewish rabbis had a similar saying. Uh, Greek philosophers, Eastern philosophers had a, a, a similar statement that they made. But everyone before Jesus expressed it in the negative. They said, don't do to others what you don't want them to do to you. Jesus flipped it. And he made it a positive statement. Do to others what you want them to do to you. So in the scriptures, we see, you know, in, in, instead of saying, don't hate others if you don't want them to hate you, Jesus says, love others. Even love your enemies. Right? Right? So he makes it a, a positive, proactive command. You know, the golden rule is very similar to love your neighbor as yourself, which Jesus said is the second greatest commandment. Uh, look at verse 12 again. Jesus said the golden rule is the law and the prophets. In other words, all that the Old Testament teaches concerning human relationships is distilled down to this one sentence. Whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. And this, this is what the law and the prophets, the Old Testament says about our human relationships.